My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. You're listening to Best Quality Vacuum, the duck feed show about the Vince Gilliverse. That means Breaking Bad, El Camino, Better Call Us All. Yeah. And this week we are starting a real one-two punch of some of the tensest stuff we've seen on TV. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We got to the fireworks factory in terms of uh, tension Mm -hmm. uh, building in this. Uh, You know, the season has been a lot of setting things up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start the motion that's going to knock them down. Yeah, it's been paying into the tension bank. Now we are making our withdrawals. Yes. Uh, Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Great episode. Um, We're talking about uh, Sunset today, which I kept calling Sundown. Oh, Oh, uh, yeah. Which is different. Uh, Yeah, I I would call them roughly. Sundown is something politicians do. Sunsets are things that are Breaking Bad episodes. Only in our gerontocracy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, think, lich, I think that... Lich kingdoms. <laughs> in the lichocracy we've got. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think Sundown and uh, Sunset, uh, they they are synonymous. It's just, yeah. one, you know, one thing is something that you do, you know, when, uh, yeah... Sorry, I got bummed out. Uh, It's it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. uh, Uh, But uh, this episode was written and directed by John Sheban, and uh, it originally aired on April 25th of 2010. Yeah. Uh, This episode is kind of split in half. The first half of this is a very brief honeymoon period Mm -hmm. of Walt settling into his new life, reporting first first day of work, meeting Gail Bedecker, a standout character of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, one of the great, like, you know, not whatever's past tertiary, whatever mm-hmm. the word is means for, you know, fourth, yeah. uh, you know, low tier character, but, but a lot of fun. Um, and the closest he gets to happy for like mm-hmm. quite a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the second half, uh, is super incredibly fucking tense, uh, <laughs> with Hank, the Hank side of things with our kind of du- dual protagonist in the show. Yeah. Um, you know, Hank's investigation leads him to the RV. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and oopsie doodle. Oopsie doodle, Jesse and Walt are inside of it. Yes, it's a, um, it's a gusher. <laughs> um, the, uh, so very, very, uh, very, very great tense sequence. Expertly mm-hmm. done. Yeah, I, I forgot how early in the episode that started. You know, yeah. that, that, that phone call, which is kind of this fulcrum on which the, the series exists a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, just like seeing that happen at like minute 25. I was like, oh, so the rest of the episode's hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really good stuff. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, a goodbye to the RV other than flashbacks, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. uh, it's it's gone. Learned um, in the uh, in the commentary that they didn't actually get rid of or destroy the RV. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And Vince Gilligan jokes. Uh, he says, like, oh, so good news for the Smithsonian. Uh, they've got this. I, I I do not know if it's actually if the if the RV has actually been admitted into the Smithsonian, but if Archie Bunker's chair is in that collection, yeah, then... I've seen that chair. Yeah. it's not. Uh, it's not great. Yeah, it, it does the things that a chair does. Right. If you look at it, but you're still in a museum looking at a chair. Right. You know, it, it feels bad. I don't know. I I didn't care for it. I, that yeah. part of that is just me not giving a shit about Archie Bunker, <laughs> stupid meathead. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah. uh, the bounder is bounding in heaven, uh, yep. probably hooking up with some sexy houseboat. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like exo- the mermaids of the the uh, the vehicle house hybrid scene. Um, the uh, I did not end up listening to the uh, podcast on this one. I ran out of time. Okay. Uh, just with other stuff going on and that I was uh, not feeling, I was feeling poorly yesterday mm-hmm. in, in a way that I potentially could have worked through it. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, but I just, I don't know. I don't, yeah. didn't want to, it, it didn't feel good. Mm. Um, some, you know, some food poisoning stuff. Uh, so I don't know if there's anything on that. I assume people were jovial and yeah. talked each other up, uh, but mm. I don't, I don't actually know. Taken as read, the commentary is interesting because we have we have Dean Norris on there, which is always good. Dean Norris on the commentaries, or at least on this one, I really appreciate his presence, not just because he's good old sex gifts, um, yeah. but because like he kind of tries to turn it into a podcast a little nice. bit. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he, you know, just during the scenes with the cousins, he is very much like asking a- asking Vince Vince Gilligan, like, "Hey, what was your thought process on this?" Like, because these are cartoon characters. This is basically yeah. magic. Yeah, uh, it, it, they are magical. 
a <laughs> yeah. magical angel assassins for some yeah. reason. And Vince yeah. is like, oh, well, sometimes, you know, when you're in the writer's room, it's about thinking about stuff you haven't done and just kind of being like weirdly evasive about it in a way that if you read it straight, it feels a little bit like Vince Gilligan and the writing team do everything by accident. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they do a lot of things by accident. Yes. Uh, big, you know, Breaking Bad in the news, which doesn't often happen. He did a new interview. So every individual point he makes in it, it has to be a separate story now. Okay. Uh, and one of them is about uh, the finale of the, the series. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this series with the uh, machine gun, the, yep. uh, the machine gun device and everything. And uh, that, that is a criticized part of the show. I don't yes. know if I realized that, but people, people don't like that thing. Yeah. Um, and they were talking about how they wrote themselves into a corner because in the beginning they had him buy a machine gun. So they had to have him do something with it, but mm-hmm. they didn't know at the time they had him buy it. Right. So yeah. they do do things on accident. Right. In this. It's a very organic uh, writer's room, mm-hmm. you know, so it, it seems like he's being evasive, but also that is kind of the process. And it's just this weird miracle that it ends up getting the results that it does. What I would like, and I don't know what I'm getting out of tone policing Vince Gilligan or whatever you call this, <laughs> but it's like, like, oh, how, like, how do you go upward from Tuco? In terms of menace, right? Like, this is a direction that we just, like, hadn't explored and we thought we'd try it. And people got, like, just, like, literally just to say, like, what the dynamic kind of clearly is. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I would, I would appreciate more of that, too. And that is the big thing I've I've always wanted on the podcast and generally not gotten. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but it is fun having Eden Norris on there. Also, the director on this, they, they spent it. Everybody spends a good amount of time just commenting on the very basics of acting. Like at one point, uh, he says, man, it must be really hard to you know be talking on a, acting on the phone when nobody's on the other end. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's rough. That's rough to listen to. Like, I, I admire acting. I think and, oh, and, yeah, and specifically yeah. this act, this episode, I think the performances are great. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Um, you know, uh, better than, you know, th- this is a standard episode for performances, I think, specifically uh, with Brian Cranston, mm-hmm. who does a really, really good job uh, yeah. in, in several of the scenes I, w- I want to point out. But at the same time, pretending to have a conversation is not the most impressive feat of acting no, I've ever no. seen in my life. Uh, yeah. So um, not tons of uh, extra back matter insight. I apologize to everybody for not listening to the podcast. If there was some kind of bomb in that, uh, I'll probably listen to it anyway, just for fun mm-hmm. uh, before we record the next episode. And I will back port gotcha. details. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get into it uh, with one of the more cartoonish things. Uh, this is <laughs> when I've been criticizing the cousins. Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that doesn't feel like they would do it. No, uh, to me, no. Uh, here it's like a badass scene, but this is something from um, a Quentin Tarantino or like a Ro- you know Robert Rodriguez movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, not something that happens in the somewhat grounded world of Breaking Bad. Yeah, you know, relatively yeah. more grounded than a Robert R- Rodriguez kind of thing. Yeah, there are yeah. so few uh, spy kids and nary uh, lava girl mm-hmm. to be found in this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we start out with this this homeland security agent on the border. Um, and he gets a well-being check uh, mm-hmm. for a woman whose neighbors or her daughter uh, is worried about her. She hasn't been in touch. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, this is a real ass thing. This is a well-being check. This happens out in the boonies. Yeah. Um, and this is the house from the season premiere. Um, so so I, I don't think it is because this, like, why would they go back across the border? I I meant to cut out this note, oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. We we don't. Yeah. It's not the house from the where the, she they traded the car. Right. For clothes. Yeah. Uh, this this could be uh, the lady who had the wheelchair uh, accessible van. Maybe. Any of the number of just bodies they've killed for some reason. Yeah. They're squatting out in the middle of nowhere in a conspicuous way. Right, right. Um, what confused me about this was that the Heisenberg drawing is 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 shown, yeah, which they, they definitely left. Yeah, but then we we saw them leave it at the shrine. Did they make well, a they, new one? They, yeah, they just keep making them. You know, it, it's it's uh, like it's if you they say if you make a thousand you, of them, your wish is granted. You're describing so them the, like uh, they're Lisa Trevor. <laughs> they are Lisa Trevor in this. Like they're they're yeah. like. Uh, yeah, so he's checking it out and he can't get a hold of anybody. He doesn't notice anybody. This is shot like a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, this whole bit. Like he turns his head and sees somebody move in the foreground and stuff. The hills do have eyes. Yes. Uh, he finds the body under the blanket covered in flies. Uh, mm-hmm. They're just like hanging out with this dead body. The yeah. cousins. Uh, radios for backup. This is a thread that never uh, comes up. Yeah, he again. does. And this is yeah, this is the kind of th- reason why the, I feel like the cousins shouldn't do this. You mm-hmm. know? 
Yeah. There's yeah. A, yeah. Like, no need to fight the entirety of the law. No, no. Uh, uh, no. Uh, but one of the cousins is, you know, standing at the front door and the agent is, you know, shouting at him like, hey, you know, get on your knees, hands in the air or whatever. And uh, he's he's eating an apple while the other cousin sneaks up and then uh, kills the agent with an axe. Yes. Uh, and at the, the same and, time, it, he takes a bite of his first bite of the apple. Yeah. It's perfectly match cut to make the sound effect. Very blend. heightened. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, they called for backup, but they were gone. They just moved to another house. Mm -hmm. They're just doing this all across the country for who knows how long. Leaving all their fingerprints everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so we, uh, we cut over to Walt. Walt is, uh, staring at this painting on the wall. It's the same one from the doctor's office. Whenever Walt Mm -hmm. is staring at hotel art. Yeah. Uh, bad things, you know, are going on in his brain. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you recall from the last episode, uh, he had just left the divorce papers in the crib, which Skylar calls him about. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you remember, uh, Skyler's kind of was having kind of second thoughts about the whole thing a little yeah. bit at the time, just in time for Walt to be like, yeah, no, let's do it. Right. And uh, so she's like, hey, like, what's your big suggestion since you have the, everything planned? Like, how how do we how do we tell Junior? Right. Yeah. And Walt's like, oh, he probably saw it coming. Like, just kind of He's, you he know, saw your unhappiness. You yeah. Know? And like. And then she's like, oh, you know, my unhappiness, my out of the, the clear blue sky happy unhappiness, mm-hmm. which I, I kind of like I hate sympathizing with Walt, mm-hmm. you know, but Walt's right here. Like it, the 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 they can't tell Junior, why yeah. it is, yeah. you know, so it's like Junior saw that he's unhappy. The, I'm not telling you that your unhappiness was unmotivated. I'm saying that Junior saw it and probably yeah. saw that there were problems. It, it was the most it, it was the most evident thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I'm not, I'm not trying to like quit changing, you know, this is the quit talking about waffles. This yeah. is, this is Skylar doing some pancake waffle yeah. stuff. Uh, and then Skylar, uh, you know, says, okay, well, let's talk about this on the thing. You list out all the things you're going to pay for. It's all child support bills, yeah. things like that. And Skylar's like, Walt, you know, Walt, you can't pay for it with that money. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he's like, well, I will, you know, you want to be out of the house. I'm out, but I will provide for my family. No. Uh, that infectious language thing. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the, the, the terminology that Gus used. She's using the terminology. She just got from the lawyer. Yeah. She goes, well, that'll make us accessories after the fact. Skylar doesn't know that terminology, you know, nope. like she, I'm not, you know, Skylar's <laughs> a smart person, but that she's just using this. Cause she's just heard it. Yeah. You know, they're uh, both like, they've both just come from their proxies almost, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, this, it's this, uh, this aggression will not stand, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly that. You know, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, and he basically says, you know, Skylar, how do you think I've been paying our bills for the last six months? Yeah, like we've if done your that bridge. The, yeah, th- it is too late for that. Yeah, yeah. You know? um, and then we've learned where Walt is, right? Uh, yep. This His real estate agent walks in and says, hey, you know, if you like this, we have three identical units to buy. He's here looking, he's buying a condo. Uh, that's yeah. what it is. You know, again, trying to establish his new life. And Walt does this little power play. He says, Oh, I like this one. I'm like, oh, this is the this is the model unit. No, no, I'll just buy this one. This will be fine. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> dipping into Heisenberg a little bit. Uh, when the guy hesitates, you know, name one thing in this world that is not negotiable. Yeah. It's uh he's big time in him. Uh, yeah. He just wants a furnished apartment. They sell those. Yes. You, you don't have to big time somebody <laughs> to get their mm-hmm. model. Uh, yeah. You can get a furnished place. Um, so uh, we show Gus uh, working at Los Poyos, um, talk to his manager, one of the low key reoccurring characters in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the cousins walk in and sit at a booth to mad dog him. They're going to yeah. keep doing it and just stare at him. Um, <laughs> it's so weird that they sit on the same side of the booth. They're in love. <laughs> uh, it, me and Liv will do that if there's one, if it's one of those horrible hybrids that's like half of it's a booth and half of it's chairs. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just much prefer a booth. You know? I I, or, I do not look sideways at a uh, at, at a, a couple sitting on the same side of the oh, booth. Yeah. You, you want to you want to be close, right? Yeah, th- um, th- th- they're not snuggling. <laughs> if it's identical twins. Yeah, they're just <laughs> passing little pictures of Heisenberg back and forth <laughs> <laughs> under the table. <laughs> um, yeah. um, so uh, we cut over to uh, a welcome return of Skinny Pete and Badger. Uh, yeah. looking at a piece of Jesse's meth. Yeah. yeah. Gigantic crystal of this thing. They're yep. admiring it. And if it were he... any bigger, it'd be a Jolly Rancher. Uh, <laughs> according to Skinny Pete. Yeah. Uh, and he welcomes them to try it. Right. And they being 
good friends, right? They're like, well, is that cool? You know? Yeah. You're <laughs> like, in recovery. They don't want to endanger his recovery. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 try it. Uh, you know, and Badger does it, you know, and gets up and starts doing a little river dance mm-hmm. uh, for this scuffing up the floor. Yeah. Uh, and he, he says uh, it's like somebody scooped his brain out and boiled it in. Um, God, what is the thing he says? It's like formaldehyde or or something like that, like something awful. Yeah. Like every time somebody describes meth in this thing, <laughs> the white hot action daggers going through your head and your brain yeah. being boiled in like acetone. I would like to spend money on this, please. Yeah. Awful, <laughs> awful, awful. <laughs> Uh, and then Jesse said, you know, he's going to take take more. He's like, no, 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 I think you've had enough. Let's talk business. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he wants to get back in the game. Yeah. yeah. And the mood turns. They don't want to do this because combo just recently passed. Yeah. Like, you know, this is what got them in trouble the first time. Skinny P, skinny P, you didn't ask. Like, so the, this isn't just recreational, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like Jesse says, "Oh, you know, we'll, we'll you know we'll, we won't get greedy. We'll we'll sell smart. We'll sell safe." He he knows that he is in direct competition with with with, with Fring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, he's he may not be specifically expanding into his territory. Yeah, but this is him power playing. You know, again, proxy wars, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, going in here, uh, he recruits him. You know, Skinny Pete's going to go buy stuff, and Badger has to go have Clovis fix up the RV. You know, yeah. uh, people get pulled over her taillights and all the time. Not us. Uh, he says it's very great. Uh, and then, you know, he says specifically install an ignition buzzer uh, right. so they won't get three days out. Um, you know, they get up to leave and we cut over to Hank, who's been staking them out. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, and that's great. You know, again, mm-hmm. he's putting together the pieces. I love a dual protagonist. Like, yeah. obviously, we don't want anyone to get caught, but we also love seeing Hank do detective shit. Oh, the game of cat uh, and also cat. Yeah. And yeah. we like both cats. Yeah. You know, I, I love that feeling. Brand, Brandon Mayhew. I know you. Small world, old Kirky. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just the, these uh, these familiar names and you know faces. People who mysteriously have gotten out of every bit of trouble Hank has tried to put them in. Suddenly showing up together. Yeah. Uh, Walt gets ready for work. Uh, you know, very serious, makes himself lunch, cuts off the crust on his sandwich like a maniac, uh, gets <laughs> dressed uh, and drives Junior to school, yeah. you know, uh, and he's talking it over with Junior, talking through the divorce. Uh, yes. Here. Um, I like the scene as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there, there's some good. I, I like genuine Walt. Yes. Uh, in, in a general sense, when it pops up like Walt's a monster, but I like seeing his humanity. Mm hmm. You know, yeah, uh, and he's like, you know, you're gonna see a lot more of me from now on. I'm gonna give you a ride every day. And Junior's like, oh, I don't get a say in that either. Like, I have to go mm-hmm. stop going with Lewis because you feel guilty. And he goes, I do feel guilty, you know, but I am who I am. Like, this mm-hmm. is how it is. Like, I I like this man to man uh conversation, yeah. you know, and him and him admitting, like, you know, you got me. Like, I do feel guilty. That is why I'm mm-hmm. doing this. Yeah, you know, uh, but he's feeling good, you know. And he says, like, you know, call me crazy. I'm starting to get a real good feeling about the future. He, um, and he doesn't really have a reason to believe that anything is wrong at this point. So this is genuine, you know, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> Gus also goes to work, uh, comes in after the breakfast shift and who is there, but the cousins again. I love the yeah. manager, like speaking oh, yeah. without moving her mouth, like they're back yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so well observed. Like you, you work in this kind of place and you get weirdos, Uh huh. you know, and she has no idea of the danger <laughs> that she's in. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, it's also this is backporting from Better Call Saul, but think yeah. back to when, you know, Hector squatted mm-hmm. in the thing like he's been in this kind of scenario before and yes. it's ended really badly with a uh, yeah, with, 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 with a different manager that he's had to walk through this. Yeah, yeah. Like this, yeah. this is not new to Gus, even though they didn't know this at the time they were writing it. But, yeah. you know, we can pretend mm-hmm. uh, and Gus Gus is why they're not doing anything wrong, you know, which mm-hmm. makes him the most progressive fast food owner in the world uh, for not kicking out people for not ordering. Uh, you know, effectively it makes him that he doesn't want them to call the police because oh yeah yeah no. <laughs> that, that would be that would get him killed and also if one of his managers went over there and talked to them that would get them killed uh-huh you know these people kill you know the, the cousins just kill for like no you know? reason no reason at all they're, they're again dumb cartoons um walt gets to his first day at work and we meet gail bedecker his new yeah. lab assistants uh the, and uh, this is a great performance um i love gail Gail is uh, he, Gail is so good in how man uh just such a such a fucking dork. 
He's 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 a real dork. Uh, this is uh, David Costable, mm-hmm. uh, who I know from Flight of the Concords. Yes. Um, you know, absolute standout uh, as as Doug. Yeah. In uh, Flight uh, of the Concords, <laughs> see, man, see, man, like, like two lines, but so funny. <laughs> manager of the uh, of the newspaper in the Wire. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gotten gotten a bunch of uh, bit parts, but always a joy. Mm-hmm. when he shows up you know and he's treating the both of them are like playing pretend like this is just a job mm-hmm. i love it so much like he brings his resume yeah. like, i'm sure you'd like to review that you know <laughs> uh and they're hitting it off like it's so the, cute this is uh, the, this is such a cute romance it is, what it, is. it does feel like they might kiss it it's yeah. uh it's real weird i never uh-huh. see that kind of shit and i'm just like oh these guys have chemistry yeah like, yeah <laughs> that's yeah, magic yeah. baby yeah. yeah and like it, it <laughs> they're also playing up the contrast between uh b- b- between uh gail and jesse here yes. as well oh yeah you know and the you know the, the, this if they played it straight and you know walt stayed happy with it or whatever it, walt doesn't want a gail <laughs> no, 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 no 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 walt no. walt is a messy bitch who lives for drama yes uh in in the worst possible way Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he thinks he wants a Gale, yeah. you know, but he does not want a Gale. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he's like, you know, I more than your resume, I'm more interested in this. And he, he goes over to his contraption and Gale, you think it's just gonna be some science thing, yeah, you know, yeah. but he's explained it's, he's making a, he made a very fancy coffee maker with a, yeah. with a vacuum in it. And, uh, the coffee's really good. And then Gale's like, you know, Sumatran beans. And I, of course, have to give credit to the grind. Uh, <laughs> the douchiest thing that anyone does they, 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 give they, credit to the grind. They, they, they for 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 2010, they just kind of did a Google for most annoying dude traits. Yeah, and then they pulled out coffee guy. <laughs> it, it, it could have been anything. You yeah, know? Uh, he's also a jazz guy, which we'll later find out. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, the uh, and and you know, I love that you know, uh, Brian Cranston is like, why the hell are we making meth? Yeah. Like we, you know, we have this the first time that the actual thing they're doing intrudes, mm-hmm. right? Like he brings us back to like we're actually in an underground meth super lab. Mm-hmm. We're both criminals. This is not just a meet cute between two professors. This is not what I wanted at Gray Matter. Yeah. You know, yeah. this this is we're making meth. Right. Uh and we, we get this little thing of them cooking here. Yeah. Again, the contrast of the you know the Jesse and Walt Cooks, instead of getting like you know, dirty, like weird hip hop kind of thing going on, we get this jazzy, upbeat Vince Garaldi peanuts music. Yep. Yeah. Uh very cute. They cook all day. Uh lots of little touches of like to sir with love. Mm-hmm. Like Walt, like gently correcting or like, you know, he goes to do the litmus test and then let's Gail do it. Mm-hmm. Like it is very Lady in the Tramp about to kiss. Uh, yeah. At the end, uh, Gail pops some wine and they have this conversation about, uh, you know, this dorky conversation that starts about Walt's method, you know, and then uh, just like, Walt well, asks him the question, like, why are you doing this? I don't think either of us strike each other as criminals. Yeah. You know, and Gail lays it out like he's like, well, there's crime and there's crime. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a libertarian. Uh, people <laughs> other, will... other 2010 most annoying thing. Well, yeah, continues it's, to it's, be it's, most annoying thing. But... The, uh, it keeps sweeping the, the words. Um, you know, so people are consenting adults will do what they want. If mm-hmm. they don't get it from me, they'll get it from someone else. Yeah. You know, and, and at least with me, they get what they paid for. Right. He's, yeah. he's making this almost a matter of a matter of principle about commerce. Like this yes. is this is entirely about integrity for him uh, in a in a huge way. Uh, yeah. Whereas with Walt, it's about pride, right? Yeah, yep. Uh, and it, it, Walt, there's still part of Walt that believes in chemistry. Mm-hmm. You know, this thing like there, there's part of him. You know, he talks about that, like uh, going through academia, trying to do that, where that's a lot of glad handing and shit. But you're not doing chemistry. You're not doing the work. Yeah. And he loves the lab. He wants to do the work. It's magic, you know, and, and, you know, Walt's like, yeah, it is magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Gail says, he keeps bringing up this poem from Walt Whitman. You know, when I heard the learned astrom- astronomer, um, he re- and he's like, can you recite it? Mm-hmm. And this, this is the most romantic thing I've ever seen on a screen. Yeah. I, yeah. I, We're not saying that like, dismissively either. Like no, this is, yeah. I'm still me. I, I never see this shit. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm like playing a video game. They're like, Oh, these, these characters are, are coded to be in love. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's about monsters. <laughs> I, I never, I never see this shit. And this is the most romantic thing I've ever seen on a screen. Yeah. Like, Can you recite it? And he's like, well, actually I'm not much of a dork. I could. And he's like, go on. 
You know, yeah. it's it's very loving. Yeah. Uh, and he recites this poem, uh, mm-hmm. this Walt Whitman poem about uh, the contrast between like theory and practice. No. Basically, a guy uh, goes into a lecture and sees this uh, person talk about astronomy, he talks about all the facts and figures, but it makes him tired. He goes no. outside to actually look at the stars. Yes. You and know, I, I, uh, yeah. and g- the, the the delivery on this, David Costable, you know, apparently they, like, they did a bunch of versions of it. But what they landed on is something that sells Gale as just completely, sincerely just full of wonder about yeah. this stuff. Like he is the most earnest that a person has ever been. A- everything about him is fully on the surface here. Yep. Uh, he is a guess. I am a nerd. Uh, and it, it's, it's great. Like he's, a, he's also kind of a cartoon, but he's a pretty believable cartoon. And I love the very, we don't get very much, but the very small amount of insight we get about Gus, like meeting him and kind of grooming him mm-hmm. uh, prior to this. Yeah. You know, again, in Better Call Saul, he's, he doesn't have a bigger part than that. But uh, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Yeah, you know? it, he's too, he's he's too good for this show for yeah, yeah. various corrected and weighted versions of the word good. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so we get uh, uh, Hank. He's on stakeout again. The passenger seat is overflowing with fast food. He's just like sullenly dipping shri- fries and ketchup. Back in and the. Re- Back yeah. in the day, I totally, I just, I was like, oh, he's going to have a heart attack. That's a, that, that, oh, that's okay. what they're, that's what they're aiming toward. No, no, this is just showing like slovenliness. This is yeah. being completely is, absorbed. There's yeah. two things that the uh, TV uses to code, uh, like heart attacks and stuff or depression mm-hmm. and it's fast food or watching TV. Yes. Both things that are fine in moderation. Right. Uh, <laughs> but if they ever show somebody doing one of those things, it's a flag. Like, watch yeah. out. You know, yeah. they're, they're going down. I, I found this out. I was talking to uh, Jeremy and uh, I didn't realize that Hank is supposed to be, I think, 41. In this. Huh. I hate being older than Hank. That feels real <laughs> weird. Um, it doesn't wow, feel right. Well, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just a different version of the eternal problem. I have the Homer yeah. Simpson age this year. Yeah, you know, yeah the Simpson age later. is hard too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, hard. I, I, I don't have any feeling about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it just means it's where you're just like this character you've always seen is older than yourself. Oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a weird marker of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marie calls uh, Hank and just says, hey, when are you coming home? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Hank is annoyed by this. You know, I'm working, hon. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm state- and she she starts asking questions. Is that Pinkman kid? Why yeah. can't she just arrest him? Well, so there's a little thing called the Constitution. Yeah. That old thing. You know, <laughs> uh, and then Marie says, like, listen, you know, we know somebody who's had contact with Pinkman. Yeah, uh, I don't want to bring up ancient history, but that's the guy who used to deal Walt Pot. Yeah, yeah, this is this is a lead, right? Yep. And so Hank calls Walt while he's reading his copy of Leaves of Grass. We're going to find out later that Gail gave this to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know. Um, but uh, and also this ends up being this is a load bearing poetry collection. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. What it is. I, yeah. I assume what what this also means is that time has passed. Yes, that that there is a honeymoon period of uh, of this period with with Gail, because mm-hmm. if he just brought a signed copy of this yeah. poem for his new boss, especially with the inscription that's there, that would be. Yes. Yeah. Good Lord. Like that is that is too romantic. <laughs> Coming um, on a little hot. Yeah. yeah. And even like I've gone, I've accepted it's romantic, but also uh-huh. uh, my dude. Like yeah. you've been down bad. I like, I get it, but I think this um, is like a week. <laughs> yeah. 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 This, this is after some time. Yeah. You know, um, uh, but uh, he's reading this and Hank does a whole bunch of preamble, right? Like, yeah. you know, trying to say like, Hey, you're not going to be in trouble for this at all. And Walt just tells him to cut to the chase. And I bet he wishes that he didn't because Hank brings up like, Hey, do you remember when you had your, your disappearance, you know, yeah. and I got in that shootout while I was tracking Jesse's car to that, to that drug Lord's place. And he asks, yeah. you know, this hinge question here. Do you remember if this Pinkman kid ever had an RV? Yeah. Um, the music Great. in this is so fucking tense. And Walt's face, the way it just goes completely slack. I love it. Yeah. Well, well, why do you ask? Well, you know, I've tracking it down, you know, and then he doesn't have a way, a response. Yeah. Yes, it's really good. Uh, we got to commercial. Um, we go to Jesse. Jesse, uh, you know, at first doesn't pick up the phone. You know, this is, this is Walt calling him when he does. Walt doesn't say anything. He's worried yeah. it might be bugged. Walt's, you know, doing the numbers. Yes. Instead, he calls Saul, you know, uh, bring up this thing, a uh, little TV tropes thing. At some point, uh, Saul's like, what RV? Uh, Saul's been yeah. in the RV. Yeah. 
Yes. Um, that, you know, that gets pointed out and everything like that. Um, you know, Saul's like, destroy it. Mm-hmm. He's like, why, well, you know, I, I can't go get it because my brother's watching the house. Yeah. Uh, also, it's an RV. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean get rid of it? I'm not David Copperfield. Yeah. You know? I love that line. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh... Uh, I also love the delivery. Like, yeah, how do I dispose of it? The thing, it's the size of a, it's the size of, it's RV size. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what an RV is. Uh, you know, uh, really great little Badger moment. Uh, Badger uh, and Clovis are working on the RV and Badger's like, you know about tools and stuff. You should make a car that runs on water. Then you'll be rolling in it. I uh-huh. uh, love it. Uh, yeah. Very cute yeah. um, there. And Walt pulls up, uh, you know, Clovis uh, comes around. Uh, he's like, we have to get this thing, you know, and bring it, bring it to be burned up, and take it to the desert. Yeah. Destroy yeah. it. Clovis is like, you don't do it here. He's like, if I go down, you're going down too. We're all fucking in this. Yeah. And Clovis is like, I know a better way. Yes. Uh, you know, call him. Uh, as he's leaving, Badger's like, what about Jesse? And Walt's like, what about him? Mm-hmm. You know, this, the heat fucked this up. But yeah. Badger decides to call Jesse. Uh, this right. turns out to be a mistake. Right. Uh, this is it's not really their fault. It's one of those things where Jesse doesn't have the information. Mm-hmm. Walt uh didn't tell him. In this case, he couldn't. Right. You know, there there was no way to do it. Mm-hmm. And so Jesse rushes to his car to go and intercept them uh while Hank follows. Yep. Um so the, the 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 game is on. Uh we get a little cutaway over to Poyos again. Um, you know, the cousins are there, the the, the restaurant's full, uh, they won't get up, and uh Gus steps in. Uh, and they exchange nine words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it you uh, want? You know. And then Gus says sunset. Uh, and then yeah. they get up and leave. Yeah. We'll do our business not in public. Yeah. You ravenous ghouls. <laughs> um, the uh, So we go to Walt at the junkyard where we meet old Joe. God, uh, played by old, H- yeah. old Joe is my favorite big character in this whole series. I, I, He's lo- so I love old good. Joe. If it played wasn't by... for Ed the Disappearer, uh, oh, yeah. old, old Joe would be my favorite bit the character <laughs> um, um uh, he's played by larry hankin he's the dude who uh uh was going to play uh in the seinfeld episode the pilot he was who's he's who they were hired hired to play kramer yes. um i, I you, if i if i say uh made for tv harry dean stanton you get the yeah. you get the idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> one, one of our one of our national treasure character actors yes you know here <laughs> he's like oh yeah i can destroy it beyond recognition he's like you can destroy it now beyond mm-hmm. recognition that's mm-hmm. what it means. And yeah. he explains, you know, he's going to, this is about his cube. Yeah. He's going to crush it into a cube. <laughs> and then he's going to get a call about the cube. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Chinese turn into lawn furniture. It'll yeah. be gone, you know. He's, he's, he says it like so cheerfully, like, oh, the Chinese yeah. turn him into lawn furniture. I love it. Um, and so, so what? Walt goes yeah. in to kind of scrub the RV, like looking for stuff that he needs to, he needs to grab from it. You know, scowls well, at some. He also is. He's looking, he's had taken a last look around. Oh, like, yeah. Th- this both. is at least a yeah. little bit bittersweet for Walt. There's a couple like those crazy kids. Yeah. You know, yeah. when he looks at the, you know, he looks at the tools they were using and the tools he has now. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's both, you know, like he's going yeah. through some cabinets or whatever. He scowls at some funions and then he stops and gets yep. nostalgic is kind of the, is the sequence of emotions that I saw. Right. Yeah. An insane thing that happened in my brain was wanting to save the funions. Oh. Like I'm not super Funyun motivated, but there's no mm-hmm. reason to just take like six bags of Funyuns and turn them into lawn furniture. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Funyuns like, somebody te- could get some use out of those Funyuns. Terrible lawn furniture, or really good lawn furniture, and that's why we shouldn't eat them. Okay. And neither scenario is one I I prefer to know. Yeah, I I just don't want Funyuns to be crushed into a cube unless that cube's going in my stomach to expand over the course of a day as an all day business Funyun that gives me power and energy I need for work. <laughs> I uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago I I was at a gas station and I saw like a little uh, like you know fun size individual bag of Funyuns. I was sure. like I could fuck with that. Yeah. I haven't had a Funyun since childhood. They they they're good. <laughs> That's a they're, good. They chip. are good. Yeah. They're good. They they tear up the your roof of your mouth like nobody's business. It's, oh, it's Captain Crunch. It's like Crunch a Captain Town. Crunch. Yeah. Yes, it's a Captain Crunch force multiplier. <laughs> uh, there. I also have thought often. You know how like there are some candies that they deign to sell individually. Yes. You know, I would love it if you. I mean, it'd be a packaging nightmare. Nobody yeah, taught me about yeah. this because we're having fun, you ghouls. But uh, individual funyuns, like there's a lot of times where I don't want to buy a bag of funyuns, but if there was just like a take a funyun, leave a funyun, or a nickel a funyun. And mm-hmm. like for an individually wrapped, like good, like a good size Funyun. 
yeah, for a nickel. Yeah. I don't want a, a miniature Funyun, but a good size Funyun for a nickel. There are many mm-hmm. times I would I would just do a pocket Funyun on the way yeah. out and eat it. It's a, um, I, I feel that way about actual onion rings too. Like sometimes yes. you just want, like, I don't want a whole basket of onion rings. I ring. never want a whole basket of onion rings. No. Like I love onion rings, but like I got like three onion rings in me and then I start yeah. getting a little queasy, mm-hmm. you know? No. Um, yeah. Same thing. Uh, and yeah. what I end up doing when I get a basket of onion rings is putting some of them on my sandwich if I have a sandwich. Yeah. yeah. And that always goes well. And also like it allows you to launder more onion rings into your stomach. Yes. Without having just that they're neat onion rings. Yeah. Without getting just the, 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 the straight blast of oil. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. uh, they make ones at fire in the mountain that are big enough, uh, to like be wrist bindings. <laughs> like you, you <laughs> yeah. could, you could, you could put somebody in them like a zip tie. Yeah. They, they are uh, double fisted. Yeah. We have a, yeah. we have a restaurant here, uh, around where I live uh, in my hometown, um, called the Roadhouse, and they have onion rings that are gigantic, and they sell them um, on in like tower, like in a tower, like mm-hmm. th- it's a special like wooden thing that has like a dowel that sticks up. And like a tower is of Hanoi, but with onion yeah, rings. yeah, but with yeah. onion rings, and they put it, in, they yeah. put it in the center of a table, and you take it, and you like you have to eat them with a fork and knife, like it is a steak. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God, this is making you want an onion ring, but again, one. I, yes. I want to go to like the hot case and spend, you know, 75 cents on a single onion ring. What I want is for a service that will, over the course of six hours, bring me one onion ring an hour. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Like slow eating, mm-hmm. you know, or or um, like a second edition Dungeon Dragons artifact that like <laughs> does the same. Like you get one onion ring per hour for eternity. <laughs> And when you're sleeping, you donate them to, you know, locks for uh, love. <laughs> yeah, like need to. <laughs> needy children is what I was gonna say, but locks yeah. for love is also good. You know, they can be used as hair ties or what have you for locks of yeah. love. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities with unlimited onion rings. Yeah. Uh, so anywho, uh, Jesse barges in here, and Walt figures out what's going on. You know, Hank followed you here, you fucking idiot. He doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. You know, he just looks out and he sees Hank coming in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cl- driving him. Cl- closes the windshield curtain and they're in lockdown, right? And yep. this is the most trapped he's ever been. There's really no way out of this. Oh, yeah. A beautiful, dramatic situation. Yeah. You know, uh, and Hank, uh, they lock the door, but Hank goes and starts trying the windows and the doors and basically says, I'll add a res- or you're resisting arrest to this. You can no. come out now or do this the hard way. Uh, and he grabs uh, a tire iron and he's going to wedge the door open, but then old Joe walks up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I love this old Joe <laughs> fucking hero. Of this. We, we got two libertarian heroes in this. I, it, weird, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Old Joe comes up and, you know, says like, Hey, this is my property. You're going to need a warrant for this. And then they get into like this ontological argument about whether or not an RV counts as a home or a vehicle for search and seizure law. Love it. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, I got probable cause. He's like, well, did you see it coming here? You don't know if it runs. Yeah. You know, this is a domicile. Seems to Mm -hmm. me you're fishing and that won't hold up in a, a court of law. Weirdly, he's doing Hank a favor. Yeah. You know, because if Hank had just got in there, like, he's probably right. That probably mm-hmm. wouldn't hold up uh, yeah. here. Uh, Hank rips the the tape off the bullet holes. You know, he's like, what? Well, there's probable cause for you. And then Walt uh, notices, you know, we see the, uh, yeah, like the good note uh, you have here. The sun goes through. Yeah. Uh, and like three little dots on his chest. It looks like the radiation. Yeah. It's a good, good, uh, good bull. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Walt says, Jesse, like, tell, say, how do you know there were bullet holes there before you took the tape? It's you know, just a, a wonderful little bit of insight. Yeah. Um, uh, this, yeah. Is, this is what I want Ace Attorney games to be. Yep. <laughs> uh, basically, instead of what they are, uh, this is what I want. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of questions I want to ask. Uh, <laughs> old Joe's like, no, that's a good point. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I love he, it. The way he just rolls with it, it's like, yeah, no, how did you know? Also, yeah, huh, someone's in there. Weird. Yeah, Darby, Darby made a good point. <laughs> it's great. You know, I, one of my favorite bits of acting in this, uh, you know, Walt is feeding Jesse lines. He says, you know, this is my own private, private dom- domicile and I won't be harassed. And Jesse says it and he adds bitch at the end because he's Jesse. Uh-huh. And the look on Walt's face, <laughs> I'm just like, you had to do it. You know, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> just like, 
Yeah. yeah. And so uh, it, 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 Hank knows like, OK, I yeah. can go get a, I can you know, I, I can get a warrant like we can make this happen. Right. And yeah. also he's not going to go anywhere like he's going to go yep. back and he's going to camp out. There's nothing. Uh, uh, it's, it's just still cornered. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so he goes to make his call and it's time to figure out what to do. You know, Walt and Jesse are, you know, Jesse's like, hey, you know, do we ram him? Like, what's what's going on? They said yeah. in the commentary, like, the the ideas that they're throwing out are things that in the writer's room, like, oh, we wrote ourselves into this corner. How do we get out? Right. Mm, yeah. You know, uh, it's also what you would do in Grand Theft Auto. Yes. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, you shoot me. Uh, tell me you got something. And I love, again, the acting Walt's, you know, Brian Cranston, his face. He's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I got something. Yeah. Like oh. he's this is a huge moral like crime he's doing. Yeah. yeah. This fucking sucks. It's it, I uh, mean it, it's weird to say this about somebody who has killed people but like this yes. is up this is up there in terms of downright personal emotional violence. To somebody he right? loves. Like yes. the people he's murdered before are not people he cares about. Right. You know, like this is a much more personal crime. Mm-hmm. Th- like, this is this is bad enough that later on in the series when hank figures out what's going yeah. on you know like he he even brings he's this up he's, he's he's yeah, he's he still he still remembers this yeah yeah anybody would yeah. like th- this is you know this causes a huge downfall like that we see the immediate reaction to this yeah uh we don't see what uh, i love how this is revealed as well uh walt calls him he's like hey it's me we need your help we don't know exactly what he does if he had laid out the plan yeah, you know, it suck. We have to kind of figure it out as this happens. You yeah. know, uh, Hank gets a call from a woman who says she's with the police. Uh, that Marie was in an accident as being choppered to a hospital. Yeah, uh, we don't have current information on her condition, but you should get there right away. Yeah, and yeah. Hank does the most re- reasonable thing in the world and panics. Yep, uh, and pull, pulls away, uh, thinking that it, you know, thinking that his wife is dead or dying. Uh, wow. And then the reveal is the person who's called, the woman who's called is Francesca, um, yep. Saul's secretary, you know, and she says, oh, you're going to have to start paying me more, which is a fun little jaded joke. But Saul looks fucking like he needs yeah. a shower. This, this is miserable shit. Yeah. Like this is low by the standards of the show. Yeah. Uh, the sound design of the sex part is great. Hank runs into the hospital and starts like demanding to see Marie. You uh-huh. know, and they're, they're, they don't know what he's talking about. And it's dead silent. Uh, or there's like this, you know, yeah, going yeah. on. And then his dorky fucking cell phone tone, which was established earlier, starts slowly fading up uh-huh. as like he would notice it. <laughs> uh, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, and it's just Marie, uh, you know, checking in. And he's like, yeah. you're all right. And he slowly realizes what happened. Yeah. Um, we get a, just a, great a, performance. Man, just the, the, the Kubrick stare that we get. Just the yeah. dead shark eye. Uh, yep. A really, really good. absolute barren underbite shit. It's you know, it's <laughs> huge bomb teeth. It's great, yeah. uh, and it's but it's too late. Mm-hmm. We get this beautiful montage of the RV being crushed into a cube mm-hmm. uh, here. Love yeah, um, and you know it is the it is the the the, the elegy for this thing. Yep, you know, yeah, uh, and that's not where the episode ends. Uh, the no. episode ends on even worse news for Hank. Uh, Hank's taken some real blows here. Yes. Um, we, uh, we cut over to the desert, uh, where Gus is talking to the cousins. He says, you know, what do you want? Uh, he, he says, you know what you want. Um, you have to wait until I'm done with him. We've waited long enough. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then Gus plays his ace card for this. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense why you're going after Walt. You know, yes, he betrayed your, he betrayed, he betrayed your, uh, uncle. Um, however, um, he, he is not the person Tuco. who killed. Who, yeah, he, he he is not the person who killed Tuco. I know the person who did. You know, what if yeah. I could give you the 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 DEA agent who pulled the trigger? I think they had the name and everything. They mm-hmm. they say you know Juan Bolsa says don't kill the DEA, and Gus says we're on my territory. I say mm-hmm. yes, <laughs> you know, which is going to have consequences. Yes, uh, Gus is playing. You know, is extending himself. Yeah. Here. Uh, and he's, you know, the name of the agent is Hank Schrader. May his death satisfy you. Mm-hmm. Um, and we spent a lot of time with these guys, just their willy nilly murder sprees, yeah. you know, so it is reasonable to just think, oh yeah, they're fucked. Yeah. Or, you know, Hank's fucked. Yes. Um, uh, that was a l- very long week to oh, wait. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great being reminded of the experience of watching this week to week and how much it plays you. You know, oh, when yeah. it's at its best, especially, you know, season three, season four, 
mm-hmm. of this stuff. Just the absolute, uh, you know, the the thing, the triumph of this show. Like I, I love the show. You know, I think it's one of the best TV shows ever made on many levels. Uh, it is a triumph of plotting. Yeah. Uh, in that respect specifically. Yes. Like just like yeah, that is a fascinating situation you've got me into. Uh, I am so fucking invested in this. Like I have been plotted into oblivion. Mm-hmm. You plotted me into completion repeatedly <laughs> with no care for my refractory period. I've just like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's super I good. Am, I am raw. I am sore. I, I've yeah. got, I've given myself a rusty venture. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. just good, good Lord. It, it's literally like the dramatic version of, you know, the, 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 gen, the general Lee <laughs> frozen yeah, in yeah. midair, like, Oh, how are the Duke boys going to get out of this one? And it's yeah. like, what in the yeah. world? Like, is like, is, is this literally like, are they writing Hank off the show? Like what's exactly. going on? Well, yeah. and, and because, you know, people have died previous to this and everything that feels plausible. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't feel like anybody is like safe, safe in this. Also the, the fact that we know that the writer's room that they write themselves into corners, mm-hmm. I think gives it when they are making these corners and writing characters out of, there's a feeling of uh, kind of genuineness because the writers are also getting their way out of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. like our characters, like how do we get out of this? Those are situations the writers put themselves in as well. Yeah, you and know, that's what and, makes, and that's awesome. That's what makes yeah. the uh, you know, how did you know what was under the tape thing? Uh, so brilliant is it's yeah, yeah. Inc- it's very inventive. It is resourceful with the things that they have. You know, it is you know taking the bullet holes and taking the fact that they decided to tape them over, uh, yeah. and you know reusing that in a crucial plot point. Um, it yeah. does, you know, kind of instill in you this sense that every single detail matters when in reality, there's tons of extraneous detail, uh, yeah. but, uh, you're paying attention you're leaning forward. Everything has, you know, just this potential meaning, potential it, meaning. Yeah. It's what makes people on the wiki be like, what is the meaning of, you know, uh, Marie's four Splendas and yeah. say dumb shit like that. Like, is her using Splenda, uh, uh, foreshadowing for Stevia, yeah. you know, like, yeah, which is the, the most business brained way to say like, hmm, you know, uh, I guess Splenda did foreshadow the rise of Stevia, uh, <laughs> bringing back to it first, <laughs> you know, but, but the, uh, you know, it makes it engenders that. And that's the irritating part of it. No. If you just allow yourself to be along for the ride, you end up going on these like great, great little turns like this. No. Uh, yeah. Great show. <clears throat> mm. We should do a mm. podcast about it. At some um, point. Yeah. At some point, if we ever get enough time. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate you. We do. Uh, if you like the show, you can support us by going to Duckfeed or yeah, by going to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV uh, mm-hmm. and uh, kick us a few bucks a month and get tons of bonus content in return. Yeah. Uh, you can leave us ratings reviews on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict. We really appreciate that. Thank you for bearing. We're recording this, uh, you know, during the break, but we're not releasing until after the strikes are over. So thank mm-hmm. you for bearing with us uh, yeah. during that. Uh, solidarity is important. It is. Um, yeah. And uh, big thanks to Gwen, our producer, who edits our shows. And composed the theme song. Yeah. Thank you, Gwen. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's I think that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, until next time, uh, you know, just just take the good parts of libertarianism. Yeah. Civil, liber- uh, civil libertarianism is fine. Yeah. Don't let cops search you. That part's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Making meth's bad. Yes. You know, uh, be an old Joe, not a Gale. Yeah.